Welcome ladies and gentlemen to GBK Digital and today we're gonna take a look at the Magical DIY Liquid Cooling System. Uh, first we're gonna take a look at what you get when you order this thing and I ordered the 360 version and you can also get it in 240 and 120 versions but I of course went for the big ones. As you can see I just removed the water block there and also we got the fans here, those are blue LED fans. They look quite nice but I will gonna talk about more on the performance of this kit when we get a bit later on. So let's just put the radio to the side here. Here we got the pump slash reservoir unit and um, actually I thought it looked quite nice on just on the pictures but we're gonna take a look at that later on. So let's get on with the unpacking here. Let me just get rid of these uh, bubbly thingies here. And uh, yeah, now we got the coolant here. This is actually a green UV coolant so that's pretty nice. Off to the side you go and uh, let's see what we can find underneath here. And yeah, we got some fittings and we got the tube so uh, yeah that's pretty much all there is to this uh, cooling kit and you don't actually get any more now let's take a look at the other components and uh, first off we're gonna start with the pump slash reservoir combo as you can see I just ripped it up I really want to look at this thing and see how it looks and when it got it out of the packaging here and the first thing that struck me is this component is actually pretty heavy because of course you got the reservoir and you got the pump and oh yeah and we got some mounting equipment here and do we got anything else down here no just some bubble wrap and yeah, and you can see for yourself it's completely empty. So now let's get this uh, Rizla thingy out of the packaging and let's have a close look at it. Yeah, we got the two cords. That's the power for the pump and uh, some kind of controller you plug into a fan port. Uh, underneath here we got nothing. So actually you only got uh, one inlet and one outlet. Yeah, of course. And if we look at the top you got and one more port of some kind, you can maybe use that at an inlet, I didn't, but uh, again, you have to be aware there was only three ports on this thing, but um, let's move on well. And the next thing we got here is the water block, and uh, we got to unpack this in just a second here. Yeah, and uh, what we got with this thing is uh, just a lot of mounting hardware, and we got some thermal paste, and the block itself, of course, and I won't go deeper into this, but it's just a water block. Uh, you've probably seen one else before, so let's get on to the ready, I think. And yeah, there we got it. That is the radiator. This is a 360 radiator, and um, it's a slim version. It comes with the kit, of course. Um, it's uh, I think the FPI finch per inch uh, is uh, 16, so that's pretty common. That's a lot of radiators. Is that you can also get them higher, and of course lower. As I unpack here, you can see these square things. They're actually made of rubber and meant to put be put between the radiator and the fan to make a better seal. They actually help quite a bit on the performance, so you have to use them. There was also some screws so you could mount uh, your fans and all the other kind of stuff you got to do. And uh, yeah, let's go to get this thing out and it actually looks quite nice. So yeah. One of the good things about this radiator is that it got a copper fence and a brass chamber. That's very, that's very good because even though this uh, cooling kit is quite cheap, it don't got aluminium and that means you it's way easier to expand the kit when you get later on and want to do that. And yeah, you're here you got an overview of all the parts. You got the screws, you got the thermal paste. Yeah, you got basically all you need. All you need actually to assemble this is probably a screwdriver and to make sure that your uh, the reservoir can be mounted in some base, maybe you need to drill some holes, but uh, again, you got an overview. Uh, one of the things that actually struck me if anyone know about this when you have to uh, molecule you have to do something that's called jumping your power supply and there wasn't included anything in this uh, kit to do that so you have to do that the old-fashioned way and uh, as this kit is pretty cheap and maybe target against the first times uh, water coolers I actually find that's quite bad because if you're first time you may not be that comfortable by jumping your power supply so just have to do that note and if you buy this you have to know how to do that and what you see now is actually my personal PC um, before I put in the water cooling. This is a Corsair Carbide 200R and it can't fit a 360 radiator so I have to drill some holes and make space in but it's going to fit and you're going to see the final results later on. And here you can see I cut away a lot of things and drill some holes to make do for the 360 radiator so I can get it to fit and also this is actually not my first time water cooling. I helped a friend before but this is uh, my first time doing it all by myself. And uh, we're gonna talk a bit about my experiences doing this. Even though it's me doing all the, all the work, you can say, I actually have to call in a spare of hand because mounting the CPU block is actually pretty hard doing by yourself. You can't do it, but it's pretty uh, 
yeah, how can you set in challenging? And uh, I needed an extra set of hands to do that. So <laughs> if you got that, uh, do use them. Also make sure that all your fittings fit and uh, they're bolted all the way in, especially on the CPU, because that's actually a bit hard to figure out when you've done that properly, or else it will leak. I actually had a better leak, but I could just tighten it with a hand and stop leaking. And also the tube is a bit hard to put on the fittings, and you have to muscle it uh, and use a bit of force to do that, just so you know. But when you finally get the tube on there, you are sure it won't leak because it's really a tight fit and you ha really have to use a lot of force. So that's both a good and a bad thing. And now for the results. Yeah, and as you can see, I'm pretty happy with the result aesthetically. Um, it pr looks pretty nice, but if you notice the reservoir is not completely filled, that's because it's not was not not fluid with the system because I made because I had a bit a little leak and I actually spilled a bit when I tried to fill up the reservoir. So you have to use it all and don't miss any of it. So I actually find that a bit criticizing, and it would be nice if there was a bit extra uh, with the kit. So yeah, have that in mind. Also, the pump is not that powerful, and so if you buy this version, the 3 sexy version, I wouldn't be comfortable maybe putting on a GPU block or something, as it's not that powerful, and uh, yeah, it could be definitely be a bit better. But again, this is quite a budget build, so and a budget kit, so uh, that's maybe what to expect. Also, the fans are actually pretty, pretty loud. I actually plugged them directly into my motherboard, and they were way too loud, but then I used speed fan to con just control the speed of the fans, and then I really got acceptable speed uh, noises and uh, performance at the same time. So again, can you get this uh, the same result with an air cooler? Yeah, you can to the same price. Yeah, you can, but it won't be water cooling. So if you want to go into water cooling, I actually think this kit is a way good way to go. One of the things that I could do when I use speed fan is that I could set the speed limit to one exact amount. And even though it, uh, the CPU ran hotter and I did a more intensive task, yeah, the temperature would go up, but I didn't actually have to change the speed of the fans much, and it would still be a sexual level, so that's pretty much the advantage by this in compared to an air cooler where it had to ramp up to compare and not overheat. So you get a bit of bonus, but it's not much, so you have to take that again. And again, this uh, kit is not silent at all, so if you want a silent computer, this is not the way to go either. But it again, it's water cooling, so if you want to go into it, I think yeah, it's definitely worth a try and it's a good starting point for a new water cooler this kit. And the noise levels is just as good as a normal air cooler I would say. And yeah, and that's all for TBK Digital for now. So if you like this video, please hit the like button or click that subscribe button, it really means a lot. Also if you look at my personal PC, you can see I got lights in it, that's actually my own RGB lights that I made, you can check the video out up here and uh, check out also out some of my other videos and maybe check our out the website and uh, yeah and uh, that's all from here so i uh, hope to see you again so bye